Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for for joining us. And uh, Evan Allen, I just wanted to I, give you a shout out. I didn't mention you a little bit earlier, so thank you so much for for joining us. Um, can we go around? Uh, I guess um, uh, um, Dr. Blake, I, I, I guess you can go ahead and start and just kind of give us what you've been doing for the last you know 20, 30 years. Kind of give us a little bit of a background so everybody <laughs> knows who you are. That's kind of a long story. I I think I've written. Well, 25 in, or 30 in, active like Two books. or three minutes. Just two, 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 two or two, three minutes. Three minutes okay. Um, I've been working mostly with neurologic disorders and uh, did a uh, clinical trial, randomized controlled clinical trial on Alzheimer's disease. And it was beginning dementia. Uh, and we used uh, 12 nutrients and four dietary changes and achieved really excellent results, moving the MMSE score, the mini mental status exam score from 19 to 27 over the course of nine months. And uh, it was in the high 20s, even after three months and varied a little bit, but uh, it was amazing to see. And, and I recently wrote a paper on vascular dementia and saturated fats and how they affect the perfusion to the brain of blood so that we can think more clearly and how uh, if you can reduce saturated fatty acids in the diet from the normal excesses, then you can actually get uh, people to think more clearly because they're going to have less tiny strokes, less vascular dementia, better perfusion, and also less inflammation in the brain. And I did recently write a paper about Parkinson's disease and neuroinflammation and how to reduce it. And uniquely, uh, I listed foods that increase neuroinflammation in the brain as well as some that decrease it too. So I think that might be almost enough. Uh, there's so much more. My website, drsteveblake.com, can tell you more. All right, great. Thank you. And, you know, you can always pepper in a little bit about, you know, um, about yourselves as, as we're going along, for sure. Okay, so uh, Dr. Dorsey, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yeah, everyone calls me Ray. I I'm a neurologist Perfect. at the University of Rochester. I specialize in the care of individuals with Parkinson's disease. And I spent the last five years or so really trying to identify what are the root causes of Parkinson's disease. And I think Parkinson's is largely determined by environmental factors that are around us. It's largely a man-made disease. And the three environmental factors I think are most important are air pollution, certain pesticides, and a very commonly used dry cleaning chemical called, called trichloroethylene. Okay. And, and trichloroethylene is not a pesticide? Is that... No, it's a dry cleaning chemical. It's the same chemical that's contaminated the marine based Camp Lejeune. Um, so I think most people know about that. It causes cancer um, and it's associated with a 500% increased risk of uh, Parkinson's disease. Okay. And and Dr. Evan Allen, and can I call you Evan just for? Feel free. All right. Great. Why don't you tell us about yourself? Um, in the last. 20 years of this millennium. I'm a family practice doctor. I have obtained my board certification in bariatric medicine, which is obesity medicine. And uh, just last year, actually two years ago now, I got board certified in addiction medicine, um, primarily because those conditions are so prevalent in just general primary care now that I wanted to be able to provide additional uh, specialty for those patients. And uh, we just uh, expanded our licensing here in Nevada so that I'm now licensed in Utah, um, Colorado, and Idaho so that uh, we can do actually telehealth visits for patients in those states now as well. Great. So. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, and get started. So what is the ideal I want to go to uh, to Steve uh, first. So what, what is the ideal? diet to prevent Alzheimer's uh, or Parkinson's? And how about heart disease as well? Throw that in there. <laughs> well, it's funny how all of the diseases and disorders that I study, the diets are somewhat similar. And I think it starts with whole plant foods. The whole plant foods have a, a low nutrient density, so you don't get too fat right away. And the they're just loaded with nutrients and you know, phytochemicals, carotenoids, uh, all kinds of good things. They also, whole plant foods tend not to bioaccumulate the fat soluble pesticides, uh, which do get bioaccumulated in animal fat. So it's another nice thing about whole plant foods. 
However, it is necessary to supplement a whole plant food diet. And uh, several of the supplements that are really necessary are vitamin B12 and iodine, often calcium. If you check your diet and see your calcium is low, that's very commonly needed. And there's a few others that uh, we can mention along the way here that could be really helpful. So that, that would be my favorite diet. Very low in highly processed foods and um, just not having any animal fat in them at all. Great. Thank and you. And that's the way, by the way, that I've eaten plant-based now for 53 years. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. 53 years. That's, that's before they had, you know, like the vegan ice cream at the store. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> Long before. <laughs> so, um, okay. So Ray, now you come from at, uh, at Parkinson's disease from air pollution, uh, pesticides and try Say that again for me. Chloroethylene, TCE. Everyone just calls it TCE. TCE. That's so much easier. <laughs> TCE. What is the role of diet and what is the ideal diet to prevent Parkinson's disease, either before getting it or from getting worse? Well, I, I think Steve highlighted some things. So if you think of just about pesticides of what do you want to do, you want to avoid uh, foods that have high levels of pesticides. It really hasn't been studied much Um in many studies, but uh, I think it stands to reason that you don't want uh, highly processed foods tend to have lots of pesticides in them. Fatty foods tend to constant animal products, for example, tend to concentrate pesticides as you move up the food chain. There was one great study done in Hawaii, actually, where Steve uh, gets to hang out that showed um, pineapple growers, pineapple grower sprayed a pesticide called heptachlor on the top of the pineapple, the pineapple chop the green part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, then they fed this uh, chop to cows and then the cows concentrated this pesticide in their milk. And so in Hawaii, they had a milk recall, I think in the 1970s because of high levels of this pesticide called heptachlor. They did a study there and they found that uh, those individuals who were high milk consumers in Hawaii had higher rates of Parkinson's disease. Then they looked at their brains, those people uh, who are high milk consumers lost these dopamine producing nerve cells in uh, the brain. And then they found the remnants of heptachlor, the pesticide in the brains of these individuals who died with Parkinson's disease who were high milk drinkers. Basically, you found the smoking gun there. So I think the real thing is you want to avoid foods that are likely to be contaminated with pesticides. Uh, well water, for example, is very uh, frequently contaminated with pesticides. Uh, drinking well water is associated with a 75% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. And TCE contaminates up to 30% of groundwater in the U.S. Uh, up to one third of American cities in the 1980s had TCE in their drinking water. Uh, so I put a carbon filter uh, on my filter thing at home. And if you get your water from a well, you should have it tested specifically for pesticides and these dry cleaning chemicals. And, and these TCEs, are these something that don't go away or is it something that will eventually break down and, and you know, there won't be a problem in the future if they stop using this? Yeah, so TC, really simple, six atoms. So, you know, everyone knows H2O is three atoms, two hydrogens and one oxygen. This is two carbons, one hydrogen and three chlorines, hence its name trichloroethylene. Uh, it breaks down really, really slowly. Um, people know the forever chemicals have a, a bond between carbon and fluorine. This is a bond between carbon and chlorine, which is a very closely related level, chemical or atom to fluorine. So it really breaks down uh, slowly. So it's hard to get rid of. Um, it does eventually break down, but it takes years, decades uh, to do so. And Evan, you were talking that oh, TCE no, was used as an anesthesia for years. Pure yeah. TCE was used as an anesthetic. It was in everything. It was used in decaffeinating coffee. It was used in right. typewriter correction fluid. It was used uh, by printers and painters. Um, it was using carpet cleaners, gun cleaners. Uh, 10 million Americans are estimated to work with a chemical in the 1970s when two pounds per American were produced. Mm -hmm.